the magnificent seven stocks of Apple, Alphabet, Nvidia, Meta Platforms, Tesla, Amazon, and Microsoft accounted for the majority of stock market returns last year and are already up 18% in the first two months of 2024. And while Tesla has been the standout laggard, falling 20% since mid-December, cracks are starting to show in another of these runaway tech giants. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another Monday market update, 9 a.m. every Monday morning for stocks to watch, market news that you need to see. I'm going to detail why shares of Alphabet, that's ticker G-O-O-G, could be dead money for years. Stick around after that. I'll show you the stocks I'm watching this week and how to invest. First though, don't miss this special relaunch discount on our stock trading and technical analysis course. Save 30% off the regular price. This complete course includes more than 30 videos on how professional investors trade stocks and the technical analysis they use. You'll also get bonus materials on fundamental analysis, trade examples, and trading worksheets to follow your trades. Click through the link I'll leave in the description and check out the free preview or try it risk-free for 30 days. You'll learn how to find stock trades and never run out of ideas, how to identify price changes before they happen, and the top trading patterns used by professional traders. That special 30% coupon is only available through the link I'll leave in the description, so make sure you check that out. Back to our main topic though, and the two events last week really have me worried for investors in shares of Alphabet, that's ticker G-O-O-G. Now, as a YouTuber, it's hard not to root for Google, but there are some warning signs appearing for multiple parts of that business that could mean the future growth baked into the stock price disappoints people for years. We already know that TikTok has eaten into that growth in the YouTube segment. TikTok has grown its share of the US video ad market from just 1.7% in 2020 to 6.5% last year, and while YouTube's share fell from 10.2% to 8.3% over that period. Now, YouTube still has roughly twice the number of users, but TikTok is growing faster and catching up. But then it was new warning signs that struck me last week and could mean that shares of Alphabet are dead money. First is I finally started using OpenAI's ChatGPT. I've procrastinated for nearly a year as friends and other entrepreneurs that I've talked to have started using the AI tool. I'm still learning how to use it well, but I can already say that this platform is amazing. I've used it to generate jokes and memes for the videos, surveys and social media post ideas, and even for some research. Now, where this hits Google is in its threat to the site's dominance in search. I've never liked any of the other search engines like Bing or Yahoo. It's always been easy to see that advantage that Google has and why it controls 92% of the search market for ads and collects tens of billions of dollars in that ad revenue. But in using ChatGPT for some research and search queries, I can say that this will eat into that search dominance. ChatGPT gives concise and easy to understand answers and can elaborate on any detail you need, something that usually takes much longer and a lot of website surfing to find through Google. For example, when I searched Google for how does ChatGPT threaten Google, it came back with a short paragraph from an article on Medium, some people also ask questions, and those typical site links. Finding a thought out and detailed response would take a while jumping from site to site and sifting through the op opinion versus facts. When I ask the same thing in ChatGPT, I get a direct answer outlining six components from user experience to data privacy. It took less than 30 seconds for the platform to generate that response and less than two minutes to read. Of course, Google will still dominate search, but it has fallen behind in that AI race and ChatGPT is definitely gonna eat into this cash cow. Google generated $234 billion last year in ad revenue, more than 76% of its total $307 billion in revenue. Also though, ad revenue has only grown at a 5.8% pace over the last two years. Now, I'm gonna get back to what this means for the stock price later, but the other event was a conference for startup investors I attended last week, where keynote speaker Kathy Wood explained why she thinks Tesla has the clear advantage over Alphabet's Waymo in its coming self-driving taxi market. Waymo is Google's competing product. How far, how far behind are they? Or do you see them as behind Tesla? Just kind of oh, oh yes, they're very, very far behind. The, the way you know that is, um, in AI, data makes the difference, that's it, right? Yeah, they don't know all the data. So Tesla has orders of magnitude more data, of real world driving, not simulated, real world driving data. Uh, Tesla has orders of magnitude more than Waymo. Um, I've, I have been in a Waymo vehicle, and it's, it, it, it's fine, it works. I think Tesla's going to be a lot better. And the reason is, when you collect a billion, it has five million robots out there collecting data right now and sending it back every day. And they don't care about most of it. They do care about the corner cases. And you can only get uh, the corner cases, things that happen just so rarely. 
um, with billions on billions of miles of data. Okay, first off, sorry for the audio quality on the clip. The videographer should be shot, but what she's talking about here is Waymo has collected data miles from its hundreds of robo-taxis in operation in San Francisco and Phoenix, along with several million miles worth of simulations. Compare that, though, to the billions of data miles collected from the millions of Teslas in use, much of that in full FSD mode and in all in real world. The companies need those driving miles to train the AI self-driving models, and it could become a huge competitive advantage for Tesla. While Waymo has the first mover advantage in its recent license to operate in San Francisco, the company has had to suspend some expansion plans and recall its cars. Also, instead of that city-by-city -city rollout that Alphabet-owned Waymo is conducting, Tesla is seeking a nationwide launch, a strategy Wood believes that is going to be much more efficient and take less time. Of course, like that search issue, there is enough demand in the robo-taxi market for both Waymo and Tesla to do well, but having to share that market is still going to eat into the what Waymo can charge and how much it collects in total revenue. And Nation, none of this means that shares of Google are going to go to zero. Even against that loss of search dominance and a competition for Waymo, it's still going to generate hundreds of billions of dollars in revenue. But it will need to spend more on marketing and revenue growth is likely to disappoint. This is going to be a problem for investors. To see that, right now, Alphabet is expected to grow revenue by 11% this year to $342 billion, and then to continue to grow at an 8.5% pace annually through 2027. Earnings are expected to grow at an even faster pace at 17% this year to $6.78 a share and 15% annually over the next three years. For this strong growth, investors are paying a share price of six times revenue and 26 times expected earnings, that P.E. ratio. Now, that's not as expensive as some of the other Magnificent Seven tech giants, but it does bake in some of those expectations for revenue and earnings growth in the future. So what happens then when that revenue growth slows down on competition and search, and if that earnings growth falls as the company is forced to spend billions more to bring its own AI up to speed? Not only is that revenue and the earnings going to be lower than investors expect, but Investors just aren't going to be willing to pay those kinds of higher multiples when growth is less clear. Let's say Google revenue only grows by 6% pace to $407 billion through 2027, and that those higher costs mean earnings only grow by 10% to about $9 a share for the year. That kind of disappointing growth could take the valuation multiple down to that 4.2 times revenue and the 17 times earnings ratio that investors were paying in 2022. That would mean a share price between $138 to $153 over the next three years. Now that flat or 3.5% annual return at best wouldn't leave investors in the poorhouse, but it would be a giant letdown from the 19% annualized return over the last five years. When it all comes down to it, folks, Alphabet must develop an AI answer fast, but that's going to be expensive. It's going to face significant pressure on that top line revenue and the bottom line earnings side for years. It won't be able to depend on that cash cow ad revenue from search to fund the rest of its businesses, and investors need to be warned. Turning it over to some of the stocks I'm watching this week. First up, Target, ticker TGT, going to be reporting its earnings on Tuesday following a strong report from Walmart last week. And normally, Target reports before Walmart, but the world's largest retailer broke tradition to report on the 20th of last month and saw the stock up more than 5% on the day. Shares of Target didn't really react much to Walmart's earnings and are only up 3% since, so it doesn't appear that that exceptionally good news is baked into the price. Earnings are expected higher by 27% over the last year, and the company generally beats its expectations. ChargePoint Holdings, ticker CHPT, also reports earnings on Tuesday with the stock trading flat since its disastrous Q3 report mid-November and the surprise sacking of the CEO. Expectations are dismal here, with revenue projected down 22% to $118 million for the quarter, but I don't think anybody really knows what to expect on this one. ChargePoint started in 2007 and has been the clear first mover advantage in EV charging, but has bungled that by management. Now, I've been optimistic on this massive wave of government money coming into the EV infrastructure space, but growth has definitely come down for the company. I continue to hold a large position on the idea that this new management can turn those shares around. ChargePoint announced a partnership with Wells Fargo and Intech Solutions last week for financing and, and rapid deployment of stations, which could be a positive catalyst for the sales. The company has no debt maturities until 2027, and at this point, expectations are so low that any good news could help take it off again. Also watching DocuSign, ticker DOCU, it's going to be reporting its earnings on Thursday with the shares fizzling out after talks with private equity buyers stalled last month. 
the e-signature company had been talking to both Bain and Hellman and Friedman to take the company private in what could have been a $13 billion LBO deal. Shares have fallen back down to about a $11 billion market cap, which means investors are still holding out hope. But recent layoff news that the company would cut 6% of its workforce could force a $32 million restructuring charge in the first quarter and, and a warning when earnings are reported this week. Still, the company has a solid market share of that e-signature market and is cutting costs to improve its profitability and could help the stock rebound later in the year if those LBO talks are, are not renewed. I'm also watching SoundHound AI, ticker SOUN. It's up 73% since highlighting it as a penny stock that I'm buying last month, but I'm sure more than a few of you Bowtie citizens are peeved at me after the stock dropped 18% on disappointing earnings last Friday. Now, what happened is a few of you asked me whether you should take profits after that huge run-up. I did recommend the possibility of selling some of that position, taking some of your profits, but to hold on for most of its long term. So a lot of you probably got caught in that. I got caught in that on Friday, but earnings still grew 80% from the year before and are expected up 50% for this year. The company did provide a revenue outlook slightly below expectations. So that's what cratered the stock. Shares are still expensive on that traditional metric, though trading for about 22 times this year's expected revenue of about 70 million. As I pointed out in that video though, this is some amazing IP, that intellectual property, and one of the most promising trends in AI, that text-to-voice trend. I bought more shares on Friday on that drop and sold a call option on the $7 strike price for $2.40. That lowers my cost basis down to $3.80 per share. It limits my upside return to 84% on that portion of shares. If, if the stock reaches that $7 a share next January, but come on, also means I get the stock for just 13 times on a price to revenue valuation. Now here, I'm actually hoping it stays under $7 over that period so I can hold on for these long term and what could be really strong returns for a really good company. Giving you the bigger picture here with the sectorspiders.com sector tracker, we do see that seven of the 11 stock sectors closed higher last week with, with gross stocks in tech and consumer discretionary really leading the way while dividend payers and consumer staples and utilities lagged. Now the sell-off in healthcare was really interesting here because it was broad-based across most industries in the group. More than half the drop was due to a 7% plunge in United Healthcare Group, uh, it's UNH, which holds at 8% weight in the sector, but even without that stock, the sector would have finished down 0.4% for the week. Drug makers, insurers, and retailers all underperformed, with 39 of the 64 companies in the group falling. We've also seen notable weakness in the dividend-paying groups lately, like consumer staples, utilities, and financials over the last year. While some of the pain in the financials were due to that sell-off in regional banks, Dividend stocks are in a very tough environment right now. Booming stock prices in tech have pulled growth investors that way, and the high yields in money market funds and bonds have pulled the yield-seeking investors that way into those cash flow investments, leaving few left for those traditional dividend stock investors. Now, the weakness is likely to last until we see some interest rate cuts bring those yields down in money market funds and or until valuations in those tech stocks just, just get so ridiculous that that bubble pops. Until then, dividend investors are just going to have to be patient and know that you're investing in quality, long-term investments. We just wrapped up the fourth quarter earnings season and exceptionally strong earnings have helped the market build on its bull run, with 22.7% year-over-year earnings growth in that tech sector really driving investor enthusiasm and investors to, that, to those stocks. Earnings growth for tech stocks is expected to continue to outperform for 19.2% growth in the first quarter period, but investors are going to have to wait another month for those results to start coming out. Now, does that mean that the market may take a breather from its two-month, nearly uninterrupted March higher? We did see inflation data last week confirm a slower pace of price increases, so that should help support stocks as long as the CPI confirms it in a few weeks. But it is likely the indexes do take a breather. Uh, stocks in the NASDAQ are looking technically overbought here on a short-term basis, and investors are just getting more worried about those valuations. Any pullback, though, should be considered a buying opportunity, though. Data still points to a strong economy, moderating inflation, and the start of a Fed rate cut cycle later this year. Get that 30% relaunch discount on our technical analysis and stock trading course, only with the link in the description below. Or click on the video to the right for the dividend stocks I'm buying right now. Seven dividend stocks in my portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.